We welcome all visitors and members of our area faith community to this celebration of the Eucharist. Let us give thanks to God who brings us together to bless our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our risen Christ, and the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather in prayer today on this, the third Sunday of Easter, we join with our Lord and the disciples in the upper room. Here we encounter the risen Christ, who once again speaks to us a word of peace, who once again offers to us the gift of his life and love. So let us open our hearts then to receive this life this day. Let us be ever attentive to our need for God's mercy and forgiveness by acknowledging our sins, by welcoming God's grace today. Lord Jesus, who came to lift up the lowly, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, who came to forgive the sinner, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, who came to feed the hungry, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. 
you decided the holy and righteous one, or denied the holy and righteous one, and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look into my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost you can see I am. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in its name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you anything here to eat? Such an odd question. Such a peculiar question. Odd in the sense that everybody's excited, everybody is afraid, everybody is terrified, everybody is confused, everybody is wondering. And Jesus gets incredibly practical. Have you anything here to eat? Why such a question? Well, theologians have debated about this for, well, for centuries. Theologians have had sleepless nights trying to figure out why, how did Jesus digest this food as one who was resurrected from the dead? And as a good friend of mine often says, I don't mess with theology much because theology is trying to make sense out of that which you can't make sense of. Theology is trying to make sense out of that which you can't make sense of. And how true that is. Trying to figure out God. Trying to figure out why Jesus would ask such a question. Have you anything here to eat? After all, the disciples were certainly much more concerned about the fact that the one that they thought was dead, that was now standing in their midst, right in front of them. So why did he ask the question? Well, some people think that Jesus ate this piece of fish in front of the disciples to prove to them that he wasn't a ghost. Because ghosts, of course, would not be able to actually take a piece of food and eat it. I think, personally, Jesus asked the question, because he was hungry. I know, it sounds too simple, doesn't it? But think about it, the guy was in a tomb for three days, nothing to eat. I'm thinking the man was hungry. And when we're hungry, our stomachs growl. And when we're hungry, our minds, why, why as the old Snickers commercial reminds us, we can get hangry if we don't eat something. So Jesus is hungry. But what is he hungry for? Better question, what are we hungry for? What has brought us here today? Because there's something deep down that we are hungry for, that's why that's why we're here. Not that many years ago when I was being trained to be an altar server. Okay, it was a few years ago. 
I can still remember the priest. And I don't remember much about becoming an altar server other than I was incredibly nervous. And secondly, I didn't want to mess up. But I can remember the priest who was both firm, stern, but also fair. I remember him saying to me and to the other brand spanking new altar servers, children, remember, the mass consists of stories, a miracle, and a meal. In that order, don't forget that trinity. The mass consists of stories, a miracle, and a meal. In that order, don't forget that trinity. And then as we were getting ready to leave, to go out the sacristy door, he then would smile and say to us, and don't mess up. <laughs> the mass consists of stories, a miracle, and a meal. So what are you hungry for? Are we hungry for stories? Stories that can lift us up? Stories that can renew our hope? Stories that can remind us that, why, that there is light at the end of the tunnel? Stories that remind us that indeed death doesn't have the final say, but rather resurrection is indeed the end of the story? Are those the stories that we are hungry for? Are we hungry for a story at all? And if not stories, maybe we're here today because we are hungry for a miracle. And miracles abound each and every day. Miracles happen everywhere, but perhaps, perhaps we don't see those miracles and when they do come into our lives, why, maybe they just seem to be like a ghost, a ghost, a figure of that which we are hoping or thinking it should be, and, but we somehow miss it. Are we looking for the miracle of perhaps a healing for ourselves or a loved one? Are we looking, are we hungry for the miracle that indeed gives us that promise that we can be forgiven in spite of who we are and what we've done? What is it that the miracle is that we are hungry for? And if we're not looking for stories, and if we're not interested in a miracle, well, maybe we're simply hungry for a meal, an opportunity to sit down, to sit down with others. Gosh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? After over a year of a pandemic and being quarantined and secluded to simply be with well, to be with just family, why many of us hunger for a meal, the opportunity to sit down at table with the other. You see, in the time of our Lord, sitting down and sharing a meal with other people was not only a practical thing that they did each and every day like you and I do, but for our Lord to sit down at table with another was indeed incredibly sacred and incredibly holy and incredibly important. Because when you sat down at the table with another and ate with them, you then also participated in the act of forgiveness of them. And you pledged your love for one another to them. So the meal was incredibly significant and important and symbolic. So my guess is, Jesus understood that not only was he hungry, but he knew his disciples huddled in that upper room were hungry for the, for the gift of forgiveness because of everything that they had done to our Lord and the fact that they weren't with him when he needed them the most. And so because he knew that his disciples were hungry for acceptance, for understanding, for forgiveness, for reconciliation, what does he do? He eats a piece of baked fish with them. Something so incredibly practical, but important. The question is, why have we come here today? 
Certainly it's more than just out of habit. We're here because I believe each and every one of us has a hunger, something within us that wants to be known, that wants to be understood, that wants to be forgiven, that wants to be accepted, that wants to be loved, that wants to be a person who is able to both give and receive the gift of compassion and kindness and mercy. We all want that. We all love a good story. We all look for and long for a miracle. We all desire to share in a meal. And that's why we're here. Have you anything here to eat? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. The world to come. Let us present to the Lord the needs and the prayers of this church gathered today. That the church be a clear and credible witness to the resurrected Christ through our love and mercy toward one another. We pray. Glory to hear our prayer. That God's healing hand will touch nations experiencing discord and those finding it difficult to admit mistakes. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we look for ways to mend differences in our families and in our community, and for an end to all forms of violence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick obtain medical attention, and those lacking food, clothing, and shelter receive life's necessities. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we develop a deeper sense of responsibility for the earth and appreciate its many gifts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those receiving First Holy Communion and their families are filled with God's love and blessings. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died and those who grieve their loss find comfort in the loving arms of Jesus. Remembering Sarah Carlson, Tony and Angie Kudrowski, Father Jerry Lapka, David Flagg, and Bob Bowman. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we come before you in prayer today. We thank you, we thank you for the gift of your Son, who comes to satisfy our hunger for the bread of life. And so as we receive him this day, may the gifts of bread and wine and the gift of ourselves, which we now offer to you, be transformed into the living presence of your Son. Hear our petitions, answer them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, these offerings of your exalted Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Forgot the big host. <laughs> Don't mess up. <laughs> you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once with the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Amen. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty God, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, with the, all the other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, so that sharing their grief and their pain, their joy and their hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice 
in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray for our daily bread as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
I would ask that you please remember in your prayers the repose of the souls of David Flagg and Bob Bauman, uh, both members of our Church of St. Mary here in Wilmer, both who died this past week. I would ask that you please remember them as well as their families who grieve their death at this time. Uh, the funeral arrangements for both David and Bob are pending at this time, but eternal rest to grant unto them, O Lord. And may they rest in peace. Let us pray. O Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.